Fargo Famous. I'm Conrad Fargo. We are here with Kevin Bauer from uh, Egg Week is where I normally know you from, but you're here with from Prairie Heights today. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Conrad. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming on. Welcome to the show. Of course, this is the Fargo Famous segment where we talk about the people who live in Fargo. What is the kind of person who lives in Fargo? Now, were you born here? Were you from Fargo originally or where did you come from? Yeah, so a background on me, I'm actually originally from Gwinter, North Dakota, so about an hour and 15 minutes southwest of here. Uh, but I've lived in Fargo-Moorhead for about eight or eight plus years now. So another small town transplant and you come to Fargo, North Dakota, the the big city. How old were you when you moved here? Uh, just right out of college, so around t- about 22 going into 23 uh, there. Okay, so, and yep. so college is what brought you here? Yep, college and a, a job opportunity like like most people would come to Fargo that way. Okay, that's, uh, that's really cool. What did you go to f- uh, school for? So I went to Valley City State for uh, business administration, oh, okay. human resources, and uh, management. So, so college didn't bring you, because Valley City, that's out in Valley City. Yep. So college, so was Valley City bigger than where you grew up, or maybe about the same size? Yeah, it was quite a bit bigger. I mean, uh, originally from Gwinter, so about 800 people in Valley City. I'm not exactly sure. I know it's, it's stayed pretty steady, but it's, it's a few thousand people. So it was kind of a little bit of a baby step that way. And then Fargo, I came for a job. So The big uh, city for a job, right? Yep, Fargo's yep. the big city uh, for you then. And, and what was it like moving to the big city, Fargo? I was it was good. I mean, it was I obviously didn't live too far away, so I was very used to it. But I mean, being from a small town and and then coming to Fargo, it was you know traffic like everybody talks about traffic or you know, there's places to eat and all that fun stuff. So, so you felt like Fargo had traffic. Like yeah, that well, it, initially, yes, yes. Yeah. Initially, I thought Fargo had a lot of traffic and yeah. you know things. But I've I got I was fortunate enough to travel quite a bit when I was younger. So I've been into significantly bigger cities yeah, okay. across like all the major U.S. Yes. cities for the most part. So I wasn't so much, but I. I didn't also drive at the time or you know when i was in those areas and so what was this first job that you had was it the one at wday or where um so my first job actually was in a a back office processing for a small company census trust yeah Uh, so my career path really doesn't make a ton of sense yeah but i I went in kind of the financial side of things and then wanted to get into sales and work with people so Uh really wasn't a uh, I wanted to work with people, like I said, and it was I didn't really work with a lot. I was more doing data entry and that kind of stuff. So huh. got into sales at WDAY and did that for three and a half years, um, and then been with Egg Week uh, Magazine, Egg Week TV for a little over two and a half years now. Oh wow! Um, working more with kind of the same thing, but just more with uh, agricultural businesses and organizations. So I mean, there's definitely there, those are both media, WDAY and then Egg Week. So you had kind of chosen a media path, or is that just kind of a coincidence? Um, kind of a coincidence. Okay. I just, it was I you know I was familiar with WDAY and what I was doing there, but I wasn't, um, it really wasn't the media. I just really wanted to get in the sales side of things. And You don't have a dream a of, of like becoming like a media star or anything like that? Nope. I don't foresee myself being a media mogul, but you never know. So <laughs> You never know. This could be the one that uh, makes it right yes. here. Uh, so <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, and then you go to Ag Week. When did you find, now you're here not for Ag Week, uh, but actually an event. We, you know, our next segment is Fargo Fun. That's going to be uh, an event being held by Prey Heights. Of course, it's Mer- It's Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's Christmas time. We're going to be talking about that the next segment. How did you find Prairie Heights? What Was that the first church? Were they the same denomination uh, as you from, from the small town you came from? Or, or what was what was your journey to them? Yeah, so it was, um, I grew up Catholic and, and did all the steps in, in, uh, in the Catholic faith with that. And then yeah. kind of stepped away for, for a little while during college and kind of later in my uh, part of high school yeah uh, and kind of got back connected one of my friends invited me which um if you've ever been to prairie heights usually you get invited by a friend and oh. that's why i'm here today um to invite people to invite people as your friend so everybody listening that. to this yep. is your friend you're all, you're all my friends you can and they should all come yes find you on yeah. facebook so. kevin bauer on facebook yep. yeah and uh okay so you i was also uh uh raised catholic uh, from 7 to 17, got all the sacraments, uh, yeah. except for the marriage one, because uh, I, like you, had kind of stepped away from college. I never I never came back. But w- So what was it like going back? Because uh, n- it's not a Catholic church. It's a Church of the Nazarene, I think I had read. Correct. Yep, yep. Uh, How Prairie, Heights is a, or Prairie Heights Community Church is a Church of the Nazarene. Okay. Um, so very similar. It's, it's in the Christian faith. And yeah. There is a few little minor details yes. difference, but um, I, did, I didn't really look too much in the details when I uh, first came. I just started coming when they were initially at the Fargo Dome. Um, so I was, did a couple, uh, I went to church there a couple times at the Fargo Dome and then, uh, just kind of started coming and then it got closer to me. I live in West Fargo. Uh, so Prairie Heights is in West Fargo as well. And, um, so kind of connected that way and then started coming and then I've been pretty consistent. I don't know if I missed too many Sundays the last 
probably five or six years, wow. I would say. Oh, wow. So busy. you really fell in head over heels. Yep. We, we are going to our music break now. I'm sorry to those who are tired of it. It is Christmas. It's all Christmas music today. Uh, I'm excited for that. But before we go, and uh, we're opening up with Oh Holy Night, uh, which I had a, a, a wealth, an embarrassment of, of riches to choose from, uh, went with the Martina McBride version uh so we'll that's uh, probably the closest to country music you'll get out of me unless uh ween is involved uh but i wanted to so i want you to just kind of if you can real quick like what is the difference because i so i'm very familiar with catholic mass how is it di- is it different in any way or is it very much similar is it was there something that you would notice as a big difference or is it just otherwise like the same kind of like you go and and the preacher and all that can you kind of paint paint with the difference yeah so i mean main difference i mean there's not there's some definite definite differences with it and i mean it i feel like it's uh very inviting to people so it's kind of just different like there's a lot of it's a very inviting environment um and then the traditional like a lot of the like our um services are all live streamed as well so you're able to watch it so you don't have to attend but it's definitely more impactful and in person um, atmosphere, yeah. Uh, but definitely, it's one of the major things people notice is you can bring coffee into church. Which oh, as a Catholic, that was like <laughs> yes. kind of out of the scope of things. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Definitely, I really appreciate that. I'm a big. I know you are as well. A big <laughs> yeah, coffee, coffee drinker, so okay. um, big aspect that way. And then they also have a kid venture. Um, so if you, uh, a lot of times, a lot of people bring their kids to church, and if you know, it's nice to engage with other kids and you know different things. So everybody's in a different space with that, but you can definitely bring them into service. Or there's kid venture, birth through fifth grade that you're able to uh, check into and they can always attend with you uh, whenever needed so very cool well we are going to be talking about the christmas uh um what do you call it the christmas uh christmas service service there yep. you go that's yep. what i was thinking we're going to be talking about the christmas service when we come back but first martini mcbride's oh holy night don't go nowhere